Okay, so here we are. This is sort of a um, first stage of the uh, Yak 25 um, RV uh, build. Now, a model kit. I've already done the unboxing, so uh, start off with looking at the basic cockpit tub. Now, the key thing about a model is test fit. Test fit, test fit. I've said that before and I'll say it again. The plastic is thick, it tends to also be quite soft. Fit is always going to be a major issue as well. So, get the basic assembly done. This is the simple cockpit tub. Uh, not too much going on there. It's going to be hidden away in there, so I'm not too worried about the uh, side consoles, um, all those areas. The instrument panel, painted white, then dry blushed, uh, brushed black. And that's really just to make the instrument stand out. It may not be technically correct, but there's something just about, can you see it once it's in there? You know, are the instruments distinct? Um, and so that's why I've taken that approach. So, you know, um, it is a basic tub. The, um, I must admit, I mislaid the control column. So I just replaced that with a pin. The seat, um, Again, simple in its format. I, looking at the reference photos, I think the kit seat isn't a hundred miles off. But again, it's something that's representative in there. Um, tan painted uh, Tamiya tape uh, for the seat belts, the black structure, and then if you look at aircraft photos, you'll even see with the same type different color uh, seating pads. But again, sometimes I just paint things to give them a little bit of contrast. I'm not sure where the bang handles are on this, where the ejection handles are. Um, may paint one in, not sure about that, um, or put one in. Uh, those early aircraft, they sometimes not weren't necessarily uh, between the pilot's legs um, early on with the jets. It's now sort of become like the standard location, so I'm not entirely sure where these were located. Um, might just put something red somewhere just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, getting the fit. The general thing I find about A models is that the fuselages are just a little bit too thick um, to properly accommodate the internal uh, components. So what you have to do is, with some sandpaper that you've folded over like that, and just work... the interior out like that until you eventually you know, there's a piece I was using earlier um, until you uh, eventually get the elements to fit so the cockpit not too bad there um, the wheel well the instructions tell you to fit this um, to attach this to the cockpit tub but honestly, when you've got an arrangement like this, the actual kit instructions seem to be absolutely way off. Um, fitting them square to each other isn't just going to be right. So I would say on this kit, keep these separate. Um, I put plastic card on the side. Now you'll notice this uh, wheel well tub is actually made up of four components. Um, and... Uh, I then sort of reinforced it with uh, two bits of plastic card on the side as well. Painted it, uh, the interior, with the uh, pale blue from uh, Vallejo. So, the main undercarriage bay at the rear, because this is a bicycle undercarriage with outriggers. This, in the instructions, how this goes together is definitely... Oh, a bit of guesswork. Um, so, what you're left with is sort of feel it around. You end up with gaps, and so I had to fill in the gaps using, uh, again, plastic shim. Because it's just going to be hidden away in there. Dark, standard blue, you know... Very few people are going to be peering up into these bays. This needed quite a lot of sanding. 
before you can guarantee the fit and then always always test fitting the fuselage halves to ensure this lot goes together even with that lot it's probably going to require a bit of filler and that side of it um, so starting phase of the build I'd also say the wheel well bays and how the undercarriage locates with it is a little bit questionable as well and I probably need to straighten up my sanding out uh, on the nose undercarriage so I have to open that out as well uh, just really thin out the plastic that's the best way I think of uh, ensuring the internal fit now there's no locating tags uh, on this so you've really got to think about the alignment as well um, <laughs> irony is as always there is a reason why a model is pretty much my favorite kit manufacturer not just for the subjects because I like this part of model making i like the tactile element the working the way through things the sanding the filling the fitting is always something i particularly enjoy and so that's why i probably like a model kits so coming along um i don't lose sleep over the fine details too much or making sure it's for realistic because you see so little i think a model it's a fair uh is is the overall profile right? Does it look like what it's supposed to look like? And I'll be very surprised if people start giving up, giving me a hard time over the exact cockpit details of a uh, the high altitude version of a Yak 25. Bearing in mind the canopy is so thick, it's going to be fairly difficult to see anyway. Um, the inside of the canopy will be in the, in a grey as opposed to the blue. But I just took a bit of a flying guess at the uh, wheel well. Um, hmm. They aren't too good. They give you some uh, paint guides. Uh, but then you've got the colour guide, the call outs for the cockpit. But then there's very limited uh, colour call outs for other areas. Um, certainly the uh, engine pods are going to be next after I've got a few of the large halves together. Um, so you look at it and sometimes, let's face it, it's going to be guesswork. You you look at your reference photos, your images online and just take the best part, pass at it. Um, this main undercarriage bay, yeah, definitely quite, quite a lot of fun to fit together. So anyway, so that's where we are so far. Uh, another different, slightly different approach to the video format. Well, so before we close it up, we've got the tubs in place. I've put the nose weight. Initially, I put it in there. Didn't like it. So I've moved the, the milliput and the pellets to the nose. So this is de definitely going to sit right. I tend to overweight things. Uh, this now goes together pretty much. As it should. There's going to have to be a fair bit of filler, but you know that's reasonable. I'll pop in the seat a bit later. Uh, things seem to line up okay. You can see the instrument panel. Yeah. Okay. So okay, here we are now. We've uh, <laughs> got working on the main assembly. Um, <laughs> In my favourite part, the uh, the filling, sanding, and trying to get this thing to go together. So, filling. Main fuselage filled with the Ravel filler. Along there. On the spine, underside. Sanded down. Uh, wings. They've got the filler along the leading edge. The trailing edge was too thick, so that was sanded down, glued together, and then filled as well. 
that's on both wings now the wing root uh, I think you've got to accept with a kit like this that the concept of fit is sort of optimistic uh, it's a little bit like a pig going to an abattoir and thinking it's going to have a good day it's just not going to happen and um this is really um what you face with this i don't mind it this is why i build a model kits this is part of the challenge the wing roots you sand back you trim back everything and in this case it was um got to me extra thin and then i added to the seam um extra thin or uh, the super the thin super glue couple of runs of that and then sand it back now problem with using cyanoacrylate is that it sets harder normally than the surrounding plastic and particularly a model the plastic is soft these are short run molds they're not going to there and they'd be running at a, a lower pressure than um long run molds so the plastic tends to be i believe a softer grade for the flow properties that's what, what my take on it would be um so using super glue does mean you have a much harder joint than you do on the surrounding area more so than i would say with other uh kit manufacturers um particularly Ravel, who i find their plastic is quite hard fx plastic is quite soft um but this is softer than i would say than even fx plastic so you do need to take your your time over this but the wing roots both sides have been filled with super glue that adds a lot to the strength closes up the joint and then paired down with a sanding stick the horizontal tail surface that fit again is um yeah uh that needs a lot of opening out just to even get it to slide in um and it's still going to need filling around the edges uh, so some major issues there but it's workable it's doable now the engine pods i haven't put filler on these yet they're going to need work more work rescribing uh there's flash along the joins every part of this has to be worked look guys i really really don't want to put you off an a model kit an A model is an assembler's kit. If you enjoy the tactile side of modeling, some guys they love painting, they love the finishing work. Some people really enjoy decaling and will happily, you know, put on a couple of hundred decals on the 148 scale Phantom. Um, I, I, I certainly don't fall into the decal decaling fan category. Uh, for me, is you start with the largest decal and you go down in size until you can no longer be asked. Uh, so, these are definitely kits for people who enjoy the assembly side. I will say, though, even by my slightly masochistic standards, the fitting of these engine pods is a whole new level of obscurity. Now, I built another uh, Yak-27, uh, the um, mangrove uh, recce bird. Similar sort of issues, but I actually think on this one, the fit is even vaguer. Um, it's going to need shim plates, it's going to need a shed load of filling, it's going to need a thickening piece uh, to bring this rear end level with the back end of the wing, with the trailing edge of the wing. Um, the location tabs on the underside of the wing are these little nodules here. Um, the conformance to shape is questionable in every possible respect. So these are proving fun. I'm going to have to put a run of filler in along these edges here. And a wing root on this side as well. I'm going to put a run of spray along... Uh, uh, bead of paint along the join lines just to see what's uh, the state of these and i'm going to have to reinstate quite a few panel lines as well and there is this tail gap here and what i'm slightly worried about is uh, you can see that there's a 
growing stress fracture line here. Um, I'm not going to take this out, but I hope to God that doesn't propagate and I suddenly hear a crack or something. So this is going to need filling in. I may even do this gap with uh, shim strip um, and seal that in. Now, one thing I am fairly happy about is that this is actually not skewed. This all seems to be fairly square and moderately uh, well lined up. So, this is where we're at. Um, moving on it at a good rate. Um, I can certainly see these lines here. Along the nose, that's going to need rework. Along the spine, that's going to need rework. And the second engine pod is going to be as entertaining as the first. Um, so, yeah. The, it is the main phase for me. And uh, the paint job is going to be relatively simple. This is an all-over silver finish. Uh, I haven't seen any de-icing strips on it. Um, and it's going to be the painted silver because one interesting thing about Russian aircraft is a lot of them over their bare metal, over their metal, they actually put silver paint. So it's not necessarily the, the uh, bare metal finish you're seeing, but a silvery colored paint. So that's why this may be a good case for using the Vallejo basic, uh, the Vallejo metallic paint rather than the metal air which I may well do for this one, uh, on a black base. Uh, I'm seriously thinking about popping intake covers on this. One of the reasons being is that even with the best will in the world, you still end up being able to see the seams inside the air intake. So probably putting intake and exhaust covers on it won't be a bad idea. Um... There's a sink line, sink mark to fill in on here as well. That may well be done with Mr. Surfacer. That's kind of the ideal application for that. And that join along there may well be another case for Mr. Surfacer. Uh, hmm. May put Mr. Surfacer along these seams as well. See how it goes. Um, this forward seam... Hmm. So anyway, a bit of an update from the filling and sanding phase. Uh, second engine cell still to be made. Um, I have the trunking assembled here. This needs a lot of thinning down to get that to sit right and to fit. So it needs sanding down to reduce the diameter slightly. And these edges need to be thinned down on the inside so the lips uh, line up with the inside lip here. And same for the uh, front as well. So, that's where we are with the filling and sanding. And that's how it's going. So, here we are again. Continued with the sanding and the filling and everything else. So, um, put... Uh, shim piece in at the engine. That needed taking back, uh, then cutting back and taking back, uh, sanding back. Uh, Mr. Surface around the edges. Shim pieces here and here um, to bring the height of that engine up a level with the trailing edge. Tiny shim piece here. Because to get the tail plane, I'd ended up creating a bit of a gap there. So that was filled in with a small wedge of plastic card. And then filled and sanded into shape. Uh, gave it a coat of just a dark grey to look at for the current seams. And realised quite a lot needed rework. Uh, applied Mr. Surfacer. And took it back again. Mr. Surfacer around the cockpit. In particular the area just off of the cockpit here that was revel putty and literally had to sculpt out and blend in uh, because the fit at uh, the rear of the canopy was so bad looking on the underside um, 
engines again particularly have needed rework um that was phil sand well that's phil sand spray check and then fill and sand back again now after all that sanding you end up with being left with scratch marks so what i end up doing because i've i've not done this properly in the past with other models i've ended up despite my best efforts with actual scratch marks still visible so now really check over wipe down with a damp cloth and then use the nail polishing sticks that ladies use for buffing up their um the nail varnish um just to take out the scratches left by the sanding and really get your surface nicely smoothed again because invariably if you're using the rougher sanding materials you're going to leave marks and so really necessary to buff out that and go over heavily worked areas with a uh, polishing medium also with the sanding a lot of use of these skinny sticks that i get from the uh, model shows sort of stock up on them then and the sanding sponges i did discover i'd flattened off the area in front of the cockpit way too much so that needed some rework to re-establish the curve like that so it's going to need a bit more rescribing um then another coat of dark gray to check it over maybe a little bit more correction work and then we'll get on with the spraying so when we come back we'll have um we'll look at it um probably after the first coat of uh spray so with the sanding done and that side and maybe with the uh, black coat on okay so right just a little update we've got the main spraying done i used the basic vallejo metallic i used some gerillium and i used some basic aluminium trying to get different uh tones but still maintaining the same basic aluminium look I think that's worked quite well. Um, it's all been sealed up with layers of uh, the metallic varnish. And uh, it'll get some weathering done as well. Um, the panel lines, these weren't done with a wash. But rather, I'd previously undercoated everything black. And then sprayed it with the metal various metallics. I then use a pin in a pin vise and run it along the panel lines and what that's doing is it's not scribing as such or it's, it's conventional but just breaking the uh, surface layer of paint to reveal the uh, black under layer and that helps bring out the panel lines without using a panel line wash or uh, anything else a slightly different approach there um, it took quite a lot of work and refilling and rescribing as anticipated and still one of the other other engines some of that is going to get hidden a bit by uh weathering so black weathering staining along there along there and along that side and there's a little bit of freehand um brushing with the uh metal air just to bring out some natural tonal variation get the nose a bit shiny in other areas just pick up a little bit of shine along edges um so i think we're pretty much ready for deckling now but i also have to do the detail work on the uh undercarriage so a little bit of an update reasonably happy with uh, getting it to this some areas yeah ain't too brilliant but thankfully they're on the underside i'm going to spend a bit of time doing the undercarriage elements uh probably before i do the deckling just to make the model easier to support and that side of it always nice to get something on its wheels and from the with the nose weight it's definitely not going to be a problem with how she sits not too sure about the wingtip wheels i find in the past sometimes with those on a model like harriers and stuff like that they, those can be a bit of a headache to get them to sit right um my previous yak i had a major nightmare with that and the whole thing just doesn't sit right now but that's where we are so 
work it on the undercarriage now, uh, get it sat on its wheels and then crack on with the uh, deckling. So here we have it, it's done. The uh, Yak 25 um, RV. Uh, right, now since that last video, oh this is my last bit that I did on this, I fitted the undercarriage and something to note these outrigger wheels now my previous i think it was yak 27 i had serious issues with them not sitting properly so i wasn't happy with it so even though the model was painted and deckled i um sliced off the wings outboard here and then reassembled it with using super glue uh making sure that the outriggers actually sat so i've got fundamentally the four point contact nose wheel main gear and the outriggers all properly touching the ground because wing location is so questionable on this thing getting that right is a bit of a pain in the backside so i should have done it in the main assembly stage i make no bones about it but it was bugging me they were sitting five mil off the ground that would have meant taking off too much off the wheels so i just basically cut the wings off reset them and refill them and rework them even though it was painted and deckled but anyway the anti-glare panel that as anticipated did disintegrate in its decal form so that ended up being painted on uh, cut a uh, some masking and then fitted that main decals went on okay the small decals seemed to curl up once they came off the backing paper so there's only a couple of those uh, fitted those on there the three triangles on there seem to be the best ones out of the lot. So, um, adjusted the tones in a few places. These panels were resprayed, left that panel in its original tone. This was resprayed a couple of times. Uh, I applied oil washes as well and then sealed everything up with the Vallejo um, varnish for metallics. So, we can see here. And on the underside, I added the intake covers, which is something I've been meaning to do because it actually hides the intake seam. And I do quite like models with intake covers on them. Because uh, the aircraft's not got a pilot figure in it. If it did, then you wouldn't have the intake covers on. So as it's very much in a stationary, on the hard standing situation, you pop the intake covers on, and now I can see that a bit of tube is sagging a bit. The aircraft must be middle aged, so it probably would be. Anyway, um, yeah, this is certainly one of those kits that uh, fights you every step of the way, but honestly, I think it's worth it. For what you get for the aircraft type, it's worth doing. And I'm reasonably happy with how it turned out. Just best not to look at the underside. Uh, as always, pretty much all the fit issues and decal issues that I thought would happen did happen. Now I've got an absolute knack for knocking pitot tubes like that off, so I end up often replacing them with a, a pin. But. Let's see how long that stays on for. I've checked the reference photos, checked the reference images. There are very few pitos or sticking out, sticky out bits on this thing. Um, though they, they almost seem to vary from one aircraft to the other. But I pretty much built the just the basic RV version and put intake covers on it. So there we have it. I'm, yeah. I'm fairly happy with this. It looks like what it's supposed to be. And uh, it's a good typical example of an A model kit. <coughs> Would I recommend it? Yeah, ironically, yes. You're not going to have an easy time with this build by any stretch of the imagination. You're going to spend a hell of a lot of time filling, sanding, and rescribing. But I think it's still well worth doing. And it's a challenging build uh, of a very interesting and quite, in my mind, really nice looking aircraft, despite all its issues. So, 
plenty of tonal variation on the metallics, um, oil wash, multiple layers of um, varnishes, including um, Johnson's Clear, and slowly building it up uh, to this level. So I'm happy with the overall tone, and I'm happy with the overall uh, balance of this. Um, at the three foot range, which is what you're normally looking at if you've got this out, it looks okay. Get up close and you'll see the issues with the filling, the sanding, some of the marks, things like that. And yeah, don't particularly look at the underside. Uh, but that said, if it's on the show at a mod, if it's on the table at a model show, I think it's perfectly acceptable for what it is. Uh, so there we have it, guys, and there'll be a few photos to follow this. That's the A model, um, Yak 25. RV. In my mind, a good example of an A model kit, and uh, if you spot it online in a shop at a model show, strongly recommend getting it, but just be aware of what you're in for in doing so. Okay, guys, thank, thank you for watching, and uh, this is Chancellor North Wales signing out on this one.